Second Chronicles chapter 1 Solomon, the son of King David, now took firm control of the kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him and made him very powerful. He called together all Israel, the generals and captains of the army, the judges, and all the political and clan leaders. Then Solomon led the entire assembly to the hill at Gibeon where God's tabernacle was located. This was the tabernacle that Moses, the Lord's servant, had constructed in the wilderness. David had already moved the ark of God from kiriath Jearim to the special tent he had prepared for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar made by Bezalel son of Uri and grandson of Hur was still at Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the people gathered in front of it to consult the Lord. There in front of the tabernacle, Solomon went up to the bronze altar in the Lord's presence and sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings on it. That night God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied to God, You have been so faithful and kind to my father David, and now you have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, please keep your promise to David my father, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge to rule them properly. For who is able to govern this great nation of yours? God said to Solomon, Because your greatest desire is to help your people, and you did not ask for personal wealth and honor, or the death of your enemies, or even a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested. And I will also give you riches, wealth, and honor such as no other king has ever had before you or will ever have again. Then Solomon returned to Jerusalem from the tabernacle of the hill of Gibeon, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon built up a huge military force which included 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He stationed many of them in the chariot cities and some near him in Jerusalem. During Solomon's reign, silver and gold were as plentiful in Jerusalem as stones, and valuable cedar wood was as common as the sycamore wood that grows in the foothills of Judah. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Cilicia. The king's traders acquired them from Cilicia at the standard price. At that time, Egyptian chariots delivered to Jerusalem could be purchased for 600 pieces of silver, and horses could be bought for 150 pieces of silver. Many of these were then resold to the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram.